Hey guys, we are back with part two of this intro to main stage tutorial. Um, the first part, um, we went through the layout tab um, and set up our whole rig in the layout tab. If you missed that video, um, go back to my channel and find that first video, watch that because that is essential um, in being able to learn and know how to work through these other two tabs, the edit and the perform tab. Um, it's essential to know how to set up your rig how to map or assign your controls to your MIDI controller um, and to know how to do all of that in order to even get started with all the sounds and everything. So definitely go check that video out if you missed that video. Um, but if you already watched that video or already know how to use the layout tab, um, we're going to explore um, quickly the edit and the perform tab. Um, how to get started with those, how to use those a little bit, how to map all of your um, your sliders and everything to sounds, um, and how to get everything up and running for you. So, um, we started with the layout tab, we assigned everything, all of our uh, faders and everything are working, all of our volume knobs are working, the piano's working, um, and now we're going to go to the edit tab and get started in here. So when you go in here, the first thing you notice is that everything is working. You want to make sure everything's um, nice and smooth. You can hear or see that um, th that piano is kind of giving signal off um, that these knobs are working and going. Um, and that these two um, buttons are working as well. Um, you won't see them pop up, but they are working. Um, you can see that in that... Um, that MIDI um, input monitor right there. So, um, what you're what you're going to, want to do? I'm going to go ahead and delete this um, this electric piano to where I can start fresh. You're going to, it's going to start you off with some um, a lot of auxiliaries and a lot of um, effects and reverbs and just stuff like that. Um, just don't even pay attention to that. It's going to go along with your rig um, if you want to put. Uh, just in case you want to put reverb and stuff in there, um, it's going to go in there. So, first thing to note in the the edit tab um, is this patch list over here. Basically, essentially, a patch and main stage um, is just a set of sounds. I think that's a good definition for a patch. It's just a set of sounds um, that you want to um, use for a certain song or a certain part in a song. Um, just whatever you want to use it for a patch is um, a set of sounds that are working together um, so what you're uh, so there's three I forgot to note this there's three levels in main stage there's what we call the concert stage uh, there's what we call the the patch stage and what we call uh, or the set stage and then what we call the patch stage uh, so the concert stage anything you do in the concert stage um, is going to be consistent throughout all three stages. So basically, if you think of kind of like a, a hierarchy or a triangle, um, the concert stage is on top. So whatever you do in the concert stage is going to move down all throughout the set stage and the, and the patch stage as well. Um, everything you do in the set stage is going to um, is going to affect the set stage and the patch stage, and everything you do in the patch stage is just going to affect the patch stage. Um, so keep that in mind as you're working throughout main stage. Um, so what I'll do is I will um, kind of load up a a, uh, a patch for you. So what, what you're going to do, there's two ways to do this. You can either hit this plus button if you're starting from scratch, or you can um, come over here and load a patch or set if you um, have some that you want to load up. So what, what we'll do for now is just go ahead and um, start fresh. So we'll just add a new patch. You'll see it's called Untitled Patch. I'm just going to rename this. Um, we'll go with default sounds because that's that's a lot of what I use is just some default sounds. So um, we'll go ahead and make this a set just to kind of show you um, what the set stage is. So I'll drag this patch into this set. So now you can see that this this patch is in this set. Um, that way, once I close that folder, it'll go away. Once I open that folder, it'll come back. Um, note that anything when you have this uh, set stage highlighted nothing's gonna play um, so if you know when you have all your sounds in your default sounds patch here you can play everything if you're highlighted on the set stage or the concert stage nothing is gonna play um, so make sure you're highlighted on that patch now um, like I said if I if I wanted to come in here 
and do something in the concert stage that's gonna you know be the same for this whole set. So if I had multiple patches throughout this set, it's gonna affect every one of these sets or these uh, these patches. Um, same thing if I do this in the set, um, and that's that's gonna come or that's gonna affect every set that you have. If I do something in this set stage, it's gonna affect every pat or every patch within this stage. And if I do something on the patch stage, it's only gonna affect this patch right here. So it's not if you move a patch down in this set. Um, it's not going to affect that down there. Um, it's kind of confusing, but I hope you guys get that. So, um, first thing I'm going to do in the, um, I'm going to go to the concert stage and map out um, my tap tempo and my panic buttons. Um, and then my CPU load um, button up here. So, um, I'm going to go over here to this button. Um, this is important. This is really huge in knowing how to work through main stage. So if you haven't been paying attention so far, now is the time. Now is the time to start paying attention. So we're gonna highlight this button, um, and what you'll see pop up is this um, this thing called unmapped. So basically, what that means is it has nothing um, assigned to it, or nothing is telling this button what to do. Um, so you can basically do whatever you want. So what I'm gonna do um, is I'm gonna go to actions here. Um, and scroll down until I see panic. I see panic right here. And so what you're going to do when you do that, and you hit panic, hit map parameter, um, hit this button a couple times, um, and it will hopefully, um, hopefully work as your panic button. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually set that to another um, button on my MIDI keyboard because I found that if I set that to a pad, um, it usually doesn't work very well. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and redo that. So um, same thing, map that out. Perfect. Hopefully that will work. Um, so the same thing here. I'm going to go here to actions in the concert level um, and go ahead and go down to tap tempo. Map that out and you're good. Um, so now uh, I'm going to go down to the patch. So now same thing. Um, since I did that in the concert level, that's still going to affect this patch. Um, so now what I'm going to do, I have my default sounds. Um, I have that. Oh, I forgot to map out this CPU load. So I'm going to go here. Same thing. Actions. Um, come down here to CPU load. And you don't even have to map this out. Um, it'll automatically just do it for you. Um, so you can see that. My CPU load is at 1%, which is kind of hard to believe. I usually have a pretty high CPU load, but I'm sure it'll change as we start playing. Um, so, oh, that's a, an important thing to understand that I say that with the CPU load. The more things you have or the more sounds you have within a patch, the higher your CPU load is going to get. So if you want to keep your CPU low or your CPU load down, a little bit try and um, restrict the number of effects and reverbs and delays and especially sounds that you put within a patch this is going to overload your CPU which is going to overload your computer and it's not going to be pretty especially if you're in the middle of a worship set or any set that you're playing um, it's not going to be pretty for you so just kind of be mindful of that um, so now that we're in the default sounds I'm going to come, come over here to the patch library um, I have specific sounds that I use with different um, different plugins and everything. I use Native Instruments and Omnisphere and stuff like that. Um, especially if you're just getting started off with main stage, you're probably not going to have that. So we're not going to worry about that. I'm going to do everything as far as my sounds within um, within main stage. Um, so everything that comes stock within main stage is all that I'm going to use. Um, if you want to check those out, um, definitely check out Native Instruments. Check out Omnisphere. Um, there, there's just a whole slew of different things that you can use um, within MainStage and different plugins that I would um, definitely think would be worth checking out. Anyway, moving on, um, we, we're going to go ahead and put a piano in here. My favorite piano in here is the Steinway Grand. Um, you can note that there's like a grand piano and pad, there are grand piano and strings, um, another grand piano and pad. I wouldn't do that. Just stick with the grand piano. That way you can have a pad separately in there. Um, and you can kind of control everything, um, how much mix you have with the pad and, and, the, and the piano and everything like that. So um, go ahead and click on this Steinway Grand Piano. Um, and hopefully you'll kind of get some sounds coming through here. Um, let me come back and figure out why that's not coming in.
There we go. Okay, so it should go. Okay, perfect. You can kind of see. Um, you can kind of see how that's. Perfect. I love that piano. It's a great piano. Um, it's really good, especially if you're just starting off and you can mess with all these EQs and different delays and you can put a whole bunch of stuff on there and I'll, I'll probably be showing you some more tutorials later on how to mess with all of that. Uh, but for now, let's just stick with that. Um, and we're going to go ahead and come over here and map that out to a slider. That way we can control the volume of that. Um, so we're going to come here and now that we're in this, um, this patch setting, uh, we can click on this, click on this Steinway Grand Piano right here and just hit volume, um, hit map parameter, kind of slide your slider around a little bit and you'll see um, that not only is this sliding around but also is the volume of this Steinway Grand. So now you know that that's mapped out to that volume. So if you have it all the way down, you're not going to get anything. Um, but if you, you know, kind of hold out a note, um, kind of turn that up, you can hear that it's coming up as you slide that fader up. So I really love that feature because you can kind of control all your volumes at once. Um, you don't have to come in here and you know manually with your mouse kind of drag that up and down. Um, I think that's just a really nice feature. So next what we're going to do um, is we're going to come over here to the channel strip. So basically I'm going to load some more sounds in, within this one patch. Um, if I wanted to do some more patches I'd come over here but do not come over here if you want to load more pa or more sounds within a set if you want to or within a patch if you want to add more sounds within one patch um, you have to come over here to this channel strip setting hit add a channel strip that'll add this to this whole um, this whole patch right here so we'll hit here go instrument um, let's just go seven since we have seven sliders we'll go seven uh, hit create and you'll see that all of your instruments pop up here so uh, now we have to just I'll just do a couple just to kind of show you guys quick start on how to do it um, I won't do all seven um, but just know that you can kind of control this however you want to and put whatever sounds you want to in there and map everything out um, however you want so uh, so we're gonna come over here um, I really like a pad that comes and Logic Pro X, and if you don't have Logic Pro X, don't worry. Um, Main stage includes some sounds from Logic Pro that I really like. So you just have to scroll all the way down here to Legacy, uh, go to Logic, uh, Synthesizers, and then Synth Pads. And go down here to this one called Blue Carpet. Um, I found this via um, a guy at Our Worship Sound. Definitely check that channel out if you're looking for some more Main Stage tutorials and more uh, Main Stage resources check out our worship sound uh, it's a great website um, but I love this blue carpet um, pad because it, it has a lot of lows a lot of highs and I definitely had to mess with the EQ um, but it's just a really nice soft um, pad that I like to use so I'll kind of let you hear it a little bit and it really goes along nicely with this piano So I really like it. Um, you can feel free to mess with whatever you want. And again, I'll kind of show you later. It's more tutorials how to mess with all of that. But in the meantime, let's map that to our slider. Uh, so same thing, you're going to come here, um, go to blue carpet this time, and go to volume, uh, map that parameter out, kind of slide your slider down and up and down a little bit, and you're all set. So now you have those two um, set. So for instance, if I wanted to start a song on an A minor, um, kind of hit that A minor before I come in, slide that up, and bring that piano in. And kind of fade those out. Perfect. I love this patch a lot. Um, I love that sound a lot. Um, there's a whole bunch more that you can do, map more map more uh, some more sounds in there and everything uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and do these two just for time's sake uh, 
but for the meantime, I'm going to kind of map out some some things you can do with these knobs because these knobs are really powerful. Um, they can do a lot. So what I what I like to do a lot of times is kind of put some filters on these, or kind of put some um, modulation or maybe some reverb um, on here. So you can kind of see right here that this piano um, already has some some sins in here. So basically, what sins are are just you know all of your reverbs, all of your delays, anything that you want in there, you can put in here. Um, so you'll click if you wanted a new one, for instance, you would come down to these buses and basically what buses are are just a housing space for all of your effects. Um, so you kind of see that I have some um, different effects in here. I really like this large hall, um, this large hall reverb. I already have it loaded in there, so I'm not going to load it in there. It's right here, and you can kind of adjust the the volume of that reverb or the amount of that reverb in there so you can kind of see um, the difference when it has no reverb in there in this piano between when it has you know this reverb so i like it especially for means of uh for kind of lower paced songs or kind of when the songs are kind of brought down a little bit, I like to use that reverb. So I'm going to go ahead and map that out to um, be controlled with this volume knob right here. Um, so you're going to go the same route as you did with these sliders, um, except this time I'm going to go to, um, I'm going to hit this slider. Um, I'm not going to do anything down here because I'm not messing with any of the sounds. I'm going to come over here and already hit map parameter. Um, come over here to the volume of this um, this reverb and just kind of slide that around a little bit I and mean, you'll see that it automatically kind of maps that out or assigns it there um, so now I have that assigned when I move my knob you can see that it's not only moving here but it's moving here as well um, so if I'm playing kind of bring that reverb up I love that reverb. Um, I put reverb on my pad, um, on my roads that I kind of put in here. I do a whole bunch of stuff within there. One thing I wanted to also note real quick um, is this pad has a really nice um, control with the modulation wheel. And it kind of turns it into a synth. Uh, so when I bring this modulation wheel up, it kind of turns into a synth so I can play that um, kind of on a bigger part of the song. back down so that is the basics of the edit um, the edit tab there's a whole bunch of more stuff you can do um, a lot it gets a lot more advanced within here um, we'll kind of go into that later in some more tutorials um, but in the meantime I'm going to go really 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 quickly over to this perform tab you can see that as soon as I come over to the perform tab my CPU load already jumps up a lot uh, so a lot of times when I'm playing live, I just stick to this edit tab to kind of keep my CPU load down a little bit. Uh, but if you really need to see this kind of blown up, I mean, you can come over here to the perform tab. That way you can see everything work. Basically, the perform tab, uh, there's nothing, you know, really special to it. All it is is just kind of a full screen version of this um, for obviously, as it's named, for performing purposes. Um, like I said, you can use it. I don't use it um, just because it, it requires a lot of more uh, CPU load, um, but I like to use it. So that is the basics of the edit tab and the perform tab. That is the basics of main stage. There's a whole lot more. Be looking out for some more tutorials. Um, check out all of my stuff on uh, jaronarchermusic.com. Uh, there's a whole bunch more. I'll put a, a, a link to my website down in the district the, down in the description there's a whole lot more to come um, I have a new uh, worship foundations um, patch out now that you can kind of go and get to jumpstart you um, on your journey through main stage um, and you can map out everything that I put in there to your own MIDI controllers or whatever you're using 
Um, you can map that out yourself. So hope this helped. Um, definitely subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be putting a lot more stuff on here um, in the near future. A lot more resources to come. Oh, and by the way, that Worship Foundations um, is free. Um, so definitely go grab that um, on jaronarchermusic.com. Um, check that out, and I will see you next time. Cheers.